Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Biology Notes. Today I will discuss about the life cycle and pathogenicity of Cystosoma hematobium. Here I have drawn a diagram to explain the life cycle of Cystosoma hematobium. The parasite requires two hosts, one definitive host and an intermediate host. Man is the definitive host and freshwater snail of the genus Bulinus is the intermediate host. So, we can divide the life cycle in two phases. In one phase, I will discuss the development in human and in another phase, I will discuss the development in freshwater snail in water environment. Fully embryonated eggs are passed in urine of the infected persons. When these eggs manage to reach water bodies, they hatch to release free swimming Miracidium larva. The Miracidium lives in water for 8 to 12 hours and infect freshwater snail Bulinus species. Then Miracidium reaches the liver of this snail and there it will undergo some developmental changes. So, Miracidium loses its cilia and other organs and transformed into first generation sporocyst stage. Now, the multiplication occur and first generation sporocysts will transform into second generation sporocyst stage. Finally, when no further multiplication occur, then the daughter sporocysts will give rise sarcaria larva. The sarcaria larva then breaks off from the sporocyst stage and escapes the snail into water. Now, when human beings bathing or wading in this water body, they get infected. The sarcari penetrate the human skin and enters directly. Now, the sarcaria larva loses its tail and outer body covering and transformed into cystosomula. Cystosomula then enter the dermal veins and reach to the lungs. From lungs via systemic circulation, they enter portal system. Now, in the liver sinusoids, the cystosomula feeds and grows for about 5 to 6 weeks and then they become adult worms. So, when they get adult, the pairing of male and female worms takes place. Then, from liver, they migrate to the vesicle or mesenteric venous plexus. Here, the mature female or the fertilized females lays eggs. Then, the eggs penetrate the venule and urinary mucosa with the help of terminal spine. As a result, blood with eggs are excreted in urine. So, in this way, the cystosoma hematobium completes its life cycle. The time taken from the penetration and the first production of the eggs is usually 2 to 3 months and this time period is known as pre-patent period. Now, I will discuss about the pathogenicity of Cystosoma hematobium. 
First, mode of infection. An individual bathing in an infected pool or coming in contact with contaminated water is liable to be infected. The surgery stick to the surface of the skin of the swimmer or bather with the help of ventral suckers. As the water begins to evaporate, the larvae penetrate the skin. So, the infecting agent is sarkari, portal of entry is skin, and site of localization is vesical plexus of veins in urinary bladder. This parasite causes lot of pathogenic lesions in human body. The terminal spine of egg may erode blood vessels and causes hemorrhages. The eggs deposited in the tissues act like foreign protein and have an irritative effect. As a result, round cell infiltration and connective tissue hyperplasia occur. The tissue reaction in these cases is known as formation of a pseudotubercle around each egg. The structure is also known as egg granuloma. The early nodules are highly cellular and are composed of eosinophils, giant cells, monocytes and lymphocytes. Later, the cellular reaction tends to disappear and is replaced by a whorl of fibrous tissue. In the center of it, degenerated and calcified eggs may be found. Large and progressive granulomas are found only around the eggs and may cause a diffuse fibrosis. So this is all about the life cycle and pathogenicity of Cystosoma hematobium. If you have any query, please comment. Like and share the video, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notification of new video. Stay with us, keep watching, thank you.